We're making one of the most famous cakes in the world. We're making Christina Tossi's birthday layer cake. Let's go. This is one of my favorite dessert cookbook. This is from Christina Tossi. And this has the recipe that we're going to make today. Open things up. This is the type of cake we're gonna make, but not this exact cake. Here we go. This is the cake that we wanna make. It's a layer cake. I've got seven tips for making this cake that will make you a better baker. Let's jump right into tip number one. I think baking is sometimes a little intimidating because it's so precise. You have to do things in a certain order. If you find straightforward recipes that are well written, and most importantly, have things measured out by weight, it makes it tremendously easier to get things exactly how you want. Tip number one is to use weights as opposed to volume. That means you've gotta use a scale. All through this recipe, we're using a scale to measure things by grams. You can do things by ounces. Grams are a little more precise. This ensures that you get exactly the right amount. You won't screw things up measuring things by volume, which tends to be significantly less accurate. Our second tip, texture is key. With just a couple of ingredients, ingredients we're gonna use in the cake anyway, we can elevate this cake. We can take this cake to a whole nother level by adding some crumbs. Let's show you how to make them. Let's start with our trusty scale. Get that out and onto the counter and put a bowl of a stand mixer on top. We're gonna weigh out white sugar, brown sugar, and some cake flour. We're gonna use cake flour all the way through this recipe. Just add it all to the bowl, add a little bit of baking soda, and a little bit of salt, and of course, some rainbow sprinkles. You can use whatever you want here. I like these the best. Now in a separate bowl, we're gonna mix together some neutral flavored oil. I'm using sunflower oil and some vanilla. This is gonna act as a glue for our crumbs. Now let's set up our stand mixer. Well, this is a hand mixer that has a stand. I'm using these. These are the paddle attachment or the equivalent for a hand mixer. Put our dry ingredients into the mixer and set it on low speed just to combine everything. After about 20, 30 seconds, add in the wet ingredients, the mixture of oil and vanilla, and stir that until it's combined. This should really only just take a couple of minutes. Shake off the paddles, and then we're gonna put these into the oven. So let's set up an oven tray, line it with parchment paper, and pour in our crumb mixture. You just wanna basically make this an even layer. You don't need to go too far here, but just an even layer will make sure it cooks properly. Into the oven for 20 minutes. After 20 minutes, you'll have something that looks a little like this. Break it up a little bit. It's gonna look like it's not completely done. Oh, we need to let it cool at room temperature for about another 20 minutes. These look perfect now. We're done our first step in the cake. Tip number three is to take your time. We're baking. This should be a little bit fun. You should be doing this for a special occasion. This is a birthday cake. As we start putting together the actual cake itself, you really need to take your time creaming together the different components. Basically a three-step process. We're gonna cream together some sugar and butter, and we're gonna add some eggs, and then we're gonna make a buttermilk and oil mixture. We're trying to put a lot of fat into this liquid, and it really doesn't want to work. But using our stand mixer, using the hand mixer that I'm gonna use, will work if you take your time. Let's show you how to do it. So we weren't joking about the scale. We've got it back out one more time and the bowl of our stand mixer. We're gonna add some butter to it and some vegetable shortening. Add some sugar, both types similar to like we did before, white sugar and brown sugar. And then in a second bowl, I'm going to add buttermilk. If you've watched the channel before, you know I can't find buttermilk where I live. So I'm just mixing whole milk and lemon juice. Like before, we're gonna add a little bit of neutral flavored oil, add a little bit of vanilla to that and set that aside. In the third bowl, we're adding cake flour, a little bit of baking powder, a pinch of salt, and some more of our rainbow sprinkles. So that's it for our three types of ingredients. Now we'll move to our stand mixer. We're gonna start with the sugar and butter mixture and we're gonna combine that for two minutes, creaming together the butter and the sugar. Like I said before, we wanna take our time with this. After two minutes, we're gonna add in eggs, three whole eggs, and let that cream together for another two to three minutes. Slowly but surely, this will start coming together and making a homogeneous mixture. And we are now ready to add in that buttermilk mixture. Add that into the bowl and then we're gonna crank up the speed of our mixer to about medium high and let this go for four to six minutes. It should about double in size and start looking a little bit white. Once we get something that looks a little bit like this, we can add in our flour mixture. We wanna just combine this, so this takes about 30 seconds, 45 seconds, just mix it all together until there are no dry pieces of flour. And just that easy, our batter is done. We're gonna go to a sheet tray. I'm gonna lightly oil this. You can use cooking spray as well. This basically just helps the parchment paper stick and make sure it goes into all of the corners. Pour in our cake batter, making sure it gets into all those corners. Just smooth it out a little bit and then add some more sprinkles right on top. This is going into the oven for about 30 minutes. So now we're ready to take it out. It's gonna look a little something like this. You're gonna have some slight browning. When you press the edges, it should spring back and the center, there should really be no jiggling at all. So we've got our cake, the primary ingredient that we need for this recipe, but there are some additional ingredients. We need to make some frosting. Sour is the key to frosting. Sour is the key to 
frosting. You might have heard chefs talk about balancing dishes. What they're talking about is balancing some of the core five flavors. Two of them are sweet and sour. By adding a little bit of a sour component into our frosting, you're going to amplify the flavor significantly and make them taste more well rounded. There's a bunch of different ways that we could introduce a sour component. Well, we could add vinegar. That's a sour piece, but that wouldn't taste very good. We could use a lemon, but it's gonna add a bit of a lemon flavor. You may want this. In and this recipe, we wanna keep it as neutral as possible and just add sour. And to do that, we're gonna use citric acid. This may sound like it's a complex ingredient or something that a Bond villain would use. It's in a lot of the food that we eat already. See, there's even a lemon right here. This lemon has citric acid in it. It's also got a lot of other components that make it taste lemony, but the sour component comes primarily from citric acid. It's gonna make our frosting taste even better just using sugar. Well, our frosting you. starts with, you guessed it, our scale. We're gonna use the cleaned bowl of our stand mixer this time. We're gonna add butter, shortening, and cream cheese to the bowl. Now, this is where I'm deviating a little bit from the Christina Tossi recipe. I'm gonna use agave syrup and honey. She recommends using glucose syrup and corn syrup, but I can't find those where I live. This is a good substitution. We'll add those to a second bowl with a little bit of vanilla, and then we can move on to our sugar. Icing or frosting is primarily made with icing sugar. Weigh that out in a third bowl, add a little bit of baking soda and then we're gonna add our citric acid. This was the key ingredient that's gonna make this a little more sour. We're going back to the stand mixer, the same paddle attachment that we used before. And then we're gonna add our butter and our shortening into our mixer and just whip it for a minute or two until it's combined. Make sure you're scraping down the sides of the bowl so everything gets mixed. Now we're gonna add our sugars and increase the speed. After two or three minutes, everything will be mixed together and we can add icing sugar and our citric acid and everything and whip that together for about another two or three minutes until it looks a little something like this. I can tell you, it tastes pretty good and it's gonna be pretty good on our cake. All right, so number, what number are we at? Number five, do things inside out. This cake's going to expose the layers of the cake. We're gonna make layers, but we're not gonna cover all of that with frosting. We're gonna use a lot of frosting, trust me in this recipe. Showcase the cake and let it sort of show inside out for lack of a better word, or words, I guess. By showing the insides of the cake, it's gonna look more visually appealing. It's not just gonna be covered in frost, but I think these look really good. Tip number five, do things inside out. It's assembly time. We've got our cooled off cake here. We're gonna take it out of the baking dish that it was in. Just put a sheet of parchment paper on your counter and then turn the cake out so it's upside down on that parchment paper. Now I'm using a cake mold, five or a six inch cake mold to basically pierce the cake twice. This is gonna make our cake round. Once you've made your rounds, put the cake mold onto a plate lined with parchment paper and then we're gonna use some acetate paper to line the mold. This is a secret that bakers have to make really clean lines but also allow us to make a taller cake. Now for the first layer, we're gonna use these scraps, the leftover pieces from our cake. Basically push those all together, combine everything with the back of our hand until you have something that looks like a cake round at the bottom. Very little of this is actually gonna show, so this is a good use for the cake scraps. Once you have something that looks a little like this, it looks like another round, we can move on our next tip. This is a quick one, number six, something that I never even thought of doing before, and I think it works really specifically well in this type of cake, is to give our cake a bath. We're gonna bathe it in a bit of milk and vanilla to make it more moist. The cake is already, you know, pretty moist. Moist is such a bad word. What? Wet? I mean, that's not much better. Anyway, by adding a bit more liquid, it's gonna be really delicious. It's gonna make the cake more moist. It's gonna make it more flavorful. Give your cake a bath. That's tip number six. So let's make our milk soak. We just need to measure out some whole milk, put that into a separate bowl and add some vanilla together. And we've got our milk soak. We can go back to our cake assembly. So take your milk soak with a pastry brush, just dunk some of the milk onto the cake. Then we can move to the frosting. I'm gonna take about one fifth of the frosting and add it onto the cake and using the back of a spoon, just equally distribute it. Now I'm gonna add some of our crumbs, about a third of the crumbs, and then another one fifth. This is the second one fifth of the frosting. That finishes the first layer. And then we're gonna add some more acetate paper to make this a little bit taller so that we can make a really tall cake. Then I'm gonna take one of my cake layers and push it on top. This is a little bit challenging, but it should fit pretty tightly in there. And then we're just gonna repeat the process. Milk soap, another one fifth of frosting, some crumbs, and then our fourth fifth of frosting, mixing everything so that it's equally combined. Our last layer of cake goes on top. And then we've got only one fifth of a layer of frosting left. Put that on top, make it as nice or as pretty as you like. I'm gonna make it flat. You can froth it up a little bit. It's your cake. You can make it look however you like. Add some crumbs on top and we can move on to our next tip. 
We are almost there, but this is probably the hardest of all of the tips. You need to freeze your cake. You need to let it chill out. This is the last of the tips. This is the last of the things I learned making this cake. The recipe, you need to put this in the freezer for 12 hours. You know, if you're stretched for time, you could probably just do a couple of hours by letting it set, by letting it basically freeze, and then a few hours before you want to serve it, put it in the fridge so it defrosts a little bit. This idea of setting the cake is going to make it look more visually appealing, sort of hold together as you slice it so we need to let our cake chill out in the fridge so let's do that now nothing too complicated here i'm just going to cover this with some saran wrap and then it's going into the freezer to chill out it's a new day our cake has been in the fridge now for a few hours i moved it just a little while Back ago here so let's pull it out let's give this cake a try and see if it's as good as everyone says it is try and get the cake ring off of this. If you've got one of those spring-loaded ones, it might work a little easier, but it should just pull right up. That acetate ensures that everything is really cleanly held. Speaking of the acetate, we can just pull that off and we have these really, really nice clean lines. I'm gonna sharpen my knives, cut out a slice of this onto a plate and it's time to eat. So this is an absolute thing of beauty. Looks so good with the layers of cake, the layers of icing, little bits. I'm not sure if you can quite see little bits of those crumbs that we put in here. It smells incredible. Let's give it a try. That's awesome. It's, I mean, it's really sugary and really sweet, but it's still got that sour from the citric acid. So it balanced, but it's a birthday cake. It's really, really good. It looks awesome. This cake was definitely worth the effort. So that's it for this video. I hope you enjoyed going on this journey to make Christina Tossi's birthday layer cake. If you enjoyed this video, smash the like button. It won't hurt you. It's right down there. It really helps out the channel. Subscribe if you want to see more content. That's it for today. Thanks for watching. We'll see you next time. It's not actually anyone's birthday. I don't know what I'm gonna do with all this cake.